Uh, now I want to explain this question generation using some rules. Ru a rule. I want to go talk about a rule-based algorithm. So in particular, I'm going to be explaining this article by Professor Christopher Manning in Stanford. And uh, so question generation is fundamentally simple syntactic transformation. However, many aspects of semantic semantics influence what questions are good to form. We implement this observation by developing SYNQG, a set of transparent syntactic rules leveraging universal dependencies. And by the way, uh, in my last article, I used universal dependencies for high order dependency parsing. And so, and we can also use shallow semantic parsing. When we say shallow, it means that it's naive. For So a better approach is AMR, abstract meaning representation, which I really like, because it's a good combination of syntax and semantics, a good compromise, a good trade-off between these two worlds. And so syntactic, I mean the world of Noam Chomsky, and semantic, which is the world of cognitive linguistics. And if we combine them, we can get a good trade-off between the two worlds. So what are the resources? We utilize prop bank argument description and verbnet because in verbnet we have some predicate to incorporate shallow semantic content. So which helps generate questions of a descriptive nature and produce inferential and semantically richer questions than existing systems. And we use back translation because sometimes what what you are generating is not um, is not meaningful. So it creates it 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 uh, it supports by some syntactic structure. Because what is what is good about these language models? You know they have hallucination. And we say they have hallucination. It means that they do not represent the semantic rules or common sense re reasoning or something like that. Uh, but they are good at syntactic structures. They know what is subject, what is where is verb, and so so a good way to combine language models is combine it with, for example, knowledge bases such as concept net and atomic. So let's uh, get back to our, our our this article that I want to explain. So we leverage semantic role laboring structure. So these are relations, patient, temporal extent, relations that we use. And so this is a semantic role labeling structure. For example, so you see how this is, this can be simply used as a rule base because by how much, when, and when we say extent, by the extent. So by the, when, when there is a relation by the extent, automatically you can generate this rule that you put by how much at the beginning of the sentence. You see how easily you, you can generate it without, without just memorizing and those things. So semantic information is also important. So they use verb net predicates and prop bank role sets. So there are five independent heuristics. One is the node of crucial dependency relations, the modifying arguments of each predicate in the form of semantic roles, named entities and other generic entities, the states of verb nets thematic roles in the form of semantic predicates, and prop bank role sets, role sets specific natural language descriptions. And uh, for dependency heuristic, we can use universal dependencies. And so this is an example of few templates to describe the construction of the questions. For example, who accepted? Accepted is the verb here. So this template says that you can, you can see how you can generate by just a simple rule. So this is the algorithm for semantic role labeling. It uses the heuristics of semantic role labeling to update the question answers. 
So for example, just a quick review of semantic role labeling. It's a naive approach to AMR. AMR is, is much better in my opinion. In my humble opinion, AMR is much better. So who did what to whom and where? So this is the idea of semantic role labeling. And so it is the task of assigning these roles to semantic two sentence parts. So verbnet predicate template, we can use the verbnet for the, for the template. And this is an example of the of verbnet. So we can, uh, we can use prop bank for argument relations. And uh, we use back translation because sometimes the generated output does not have meaning. So it creates a kind of structure more specifically syntactic structure it adds it to that so that these sentences after because if you use name entity recognition because if you use dependencies if you use semantic role labeling so different approaches if you use verbnet but at the end of the day you need to make this more clear so you need back translation